Aloha, my internet family. How are you? Welcome back to Practical Printing. And yes, this is a Prusa SL1 here in front of me. For those that don't follow me on social media, I was given the opportunity to be one of the beta testers prior to release of it. And now that it's shipping, I thought I would take a few minutes to give you all a quick tour of what it is and the, the features and, and if you're getting one, what you can expect, or if you're thinking about getting one, what you can expect. Um, anybody that's been to any of the maker fairs or the Midwest Rep Rap Festival uh, or other shows in the past year may have already had a chance to see some of the pre-production models. There's may, may or been a few changes to it since that time. So since this is what is now shipping, I thought I would show you that. So you ready? Let's do it. Okay, so let's start off by hitting just some of the, the features and the specs on the SL1 unit. It is automated calibration. Uh, it has the touchscreen in the front. It also is Wi-Fi capable, um, and there's wired Ethernet available in the back. It detects when you run out of resin and tells you that you need to do more. It has a sensor that tells you if the door is open or closed. Uh, it does, and I'm cheating off my cheat sheet here, has a build area of 400 by 237 by 225 millimeters. I'm sorry, that is the printer dimensions. So 400 tall, 237 wide, 225 deep. Your print area is 120 by 68 by 150 millimeters. It's a lot of numbers. Um, for those that can't think in metric, that takes your print area to 4.7 by 2.6 by 5.9 inches. So it's uh, about the size of a smartphone and a little bit taller. And your printer dimensions itself, 15.7 tall, 9.3 deep, and 8.8 .8 inches wide. It is capable of doing 0.025 millimeter layers up to about one millimeter. Uh, I'm sorry, 0.1 millimeter thick layers. It uses any open resin in the 405 uh, nanometer range. Um, Prusa does make their own resins and they provide profiles for that. So if you're picking one up, I recommend starting with some of their resins until you get the hang of it and before you branch out and uh, start to explore some other opportunities. Um, also, side note on that, do your research. There are resins designed for LED and DLP, and there's resins designed for SLA laser. Uh, while they are in the same 405 nanometer frequency range, the power requirements for those are extremely different, and your exposure times may vary accordingly. Now, this does integrate seamlessly with Prusa Slicer now. So it's the one tool that you need to do everything is from adding to uh, adding supports, slicing, and uploading to the printer. If you want to hollow your model and add drain holes, you do need to do that with Mesh Mixer or some other tools, although I'm told that is coming to Prusa Slicer eventually. So with all that said, Let's take a quick tour of the unit itself and I'll show you some of the details and point them out and work you through some of the menu system. Okay, we're going to start with the bird's eye view and I'm going to take you in from the top down. So we have the lid that opens up like so. Knob that releases the build plate and it just slides off and can fit right into your cleaning washing station or um, however you post process. Two screws for calibration, and that's covered more in the manual, so I'm not going to detail it here. We have the vat with a worn uh, FET plate in here that needs to be replaced, and two screws that just hold the vat in. There's a sensor here inside the door that detects when the door is closed. That way it doesn't allow you to print while it's open. USB port in the front, 
uh, where you can use a thumb drive. And let's power it on and take a look quick through the menus. It's going to take a second to boot up, so why don't we slide around this side and let me show you. On the back here, this is the ventilation fan, two screws, and there's a filter inside that can be cleaned. Um, this filters any 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 uh, smell from the resin. Uh, we have Ethernet port and a special USB upload port for updating firmware to the bootloader board. Um, of course, your label with your serial number that I have blacked out. Standard IEC cord automatically detects if you're at 110 or 220 voltage. Power switch, main power switch. And then there's a fan here and another on the bottom that keep the, the board and the UV cool. Now it should be booted in at the main menu. So let's go through this just a bit if I can get it to show up in focus here. So this is your main screen. It tells you home, it shows you your time and your Wi-Fi signal strength. If you want to print, you just hit print. You select your file and hit print. I'm not going to do that because I don't have resin in there. You can home the tank. And you can see the motion. Or you can home the platform. And you can disable the steppers if you need to move it manually. In settings, you've got some basic settings here that are exposed. You have the network, which when it ships, it comes in Wi-Fi um, ad hoc mode or acts as an access point so you connect directly to it. Or you can turn Wi-Fi on and off and use the back. Recalibration will actually go through the process of recalibration. We don't want to do that now. Um, actually, I'm going to just go into this first step of calibration and show you something cool here. It's going to home. And on the side here, you can touch that and slide it out, and it gives you pictures that show you each step that you need to do. So the first thing it's telling us in the calibration step 1 of 10 is to tighten the build plate, and it tells us to do that there. Loosen the two screws that I mentioned before, and it shows you a picture, etc., etc. I'm going to cancel that and then go back to uh, support here. I'm not going to go into the advanced settings because you shouldn't need to go into those much um, unless you're working with tech support or you're an advanced user. Uh, you can get the full manual from the QR code links to videos from a QR code, system info if you ever need to talk to tech support, shows you your UV voltage, um, fan RPM, etc., etc. And then of course there's an about us that gives you a link. And of course you can always shut it off. And as I mentioned, there is a USB port. So there is internal memory, so you have the option of using Prusa Slicer to directly push a model out to the unit um, using the internal memory, or you can save it to a USB stick and plug it in. The option is yours, and the USB stick is handy if you were, say, running a farm of these and wanted to be repeatable, or if you were using it unattended, not on a network, and you know the, the network connection is optional. Uh, to get you over. And that is the SL1 in a nutshell. Just to show you a couple of the prints that I've done with this thing during the beta testing, we have the Sonic model, uh, Floalistics Poly Pokemon guy. Uh, these are rings were on the Prusa default. We have uh, the Eastman Superman bus, which I sprayed with a iron paint and of course the Eiffel Tower and of course the tree frog which I had done in a rose gold finish uh, again there was no post processing on any of these just basically take it out cure it wash it cure it and paint it this was by Nick Bugman on Twitter 
some more of the test models. Bilbo. We have Luby's Squiggle there, which I also did in Rose Gold. And we have the Lighthouse. Now, if you can see those, the stalks on those trees there are about the size of a piece of a human hair. They're very, 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 very skinny. And of course we have a Tron light bike. And all of these others are pieces for the Prusa MK3, which I am attempting to print in resin. More on that later. Okay, that about wraps up my quick look at the SL1. I hope you found that interesting. I will be doing a similar video on the curing washing station, the CW1, as well soon. The CW1, I think, is an essential component if you're looking at buying this uh, or buying it when you can as an add-on. Uh, it just makes washing so easy to move the bill plate from one to the other, let it wash, let it cure, and be done with it. It takes a lot of the mess and hassle out of resin printing. One thing I had not previously mentioned, by the way, is that this is open source. Um, the files are not yet publicly available, but they will be up on Prusa's GitHub here in the coming weeks as this makes it out and they make sure that there are no more, really, uh, no more updates to the firmware and such um, as it filters out into the, into the populace. So I hope you enjoyed the quick tour. Uh, I hope you liked seeing just a few of the models that have been printed to see the level of detail that it can do. I'll also be doing more videos on the SL1 here in the near future. I'll be showing some slicing tips with Prusa Slicer as well as how to hollow a model if you need to make something like this hollow so that it uses less resin and puts less weight on the build plate. Um, and as well as trying to put out a video comparing and contrasting the different resin printing technologies, such as uh, LCD, UV LCD, or UV laser, uh, when you would want to use one versus the other, etc. All right, so if you're looking forward to those and you haven't already, please subscribe and ring that bell down below so that you're aware of when the next thing is coming out. And with that, I leave you. Aloha.